First Chronicles chapter 15. And David made him houses in the city of David, places to stay, and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for a tent. Now, God told me, he says, you can't build the temple. You're involved a man of war, a man of blood. You shed much blood. I have to be up to Solomon. So he provides a place. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them has the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. Now, we tried this in chapter 13, verse 5. So David got all Israel together to Shihor of Egypt, even to the enter in Hemeth, to bring the ark of God from Kirjadim, of Kirjadim. And David went up, all Israel to Bela, that is to Kirjadim, which belongs to Judah, to bring thence the ark of God, the Lord, that dwells between the cherubims, whose name is called upon it. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart. Well, since then, David's learned. I don't know if he's gone to the law, gone to the Levites, gone to God himself. It says now the ark ought to be carried. Again, let's look at these chapters here. Numbers 4, 2. Numbers chapter 4, verse 2. And this would be the places that David would have to go in. Someone would have to show him these. Numbers chapter 4, verse 2. It says, take the sons of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi after their families by the house of their fathers. And then verse number, same chapter, verse 15. Numbers, uh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, Numbers 4, 15. And when Aaron and his sons had made an end of covering the sanctuary and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is set forward, after that the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it but they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation. And then Deuteronomy chapter 10. Somebody had to go into law for David. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 8. You got David thinking, I did something wrong. It caused the death of a man. In Deuteronomy 10, 8. We don't know if David read this himself or if the Levites, the priests had to show him. But Deuteronomy 10, verse 8. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All right, bear it. You got to carry it. It wasn't to be put on a cart. And in the same book, chapter 31, Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31, verse 9. So what David did wrong was he did the Philistine way. The Philistines made a brand new cart. All right, give God brand new. Put it on the cart and bring it to Israel. David said, hey, that works fine. Let's do it. But what's the law say for David? Remember, the Philistines are Gentiles. They're not under the law. So Deuteronomy 31 Verse 9, and Moses wrote this law for the Jews and delivered unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. So, okay, David's like, we did it wrong the first time. That ark of the covenant is to go to the priests. The priests are to do it, not a cart. So back to 1 Chronicles 15, verse 2. Then David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levite. That's what we saw in the law. Somebody showed David the law. And then hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark to minister unto him, God, forever. And David got all Israel together, chapter 13, verse 5. To Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place which he had prepared for it. Now there's, there's no temple yet. 
David has provided a sanctuary, an area prescribed by God. That's where the ark to go. David made the holy place, the most holy place, and the most holy place is where that ark to go. This time, he tried to do it man's way, failed. He's going to do it God's way. Verse 4. David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites. All priests were Levites of Aaron, but not all Levites were priests. So there's the two classes. David has understood the law. I need the children of Aaron. And I need the Levites. There's two classes here in one tribe. The sons of Korah. There's the one. There's the ones that carry that ark. Your old chief and his brethren, 120. The sons of Merai, two of three of, of the Levites. Asaiah, the chief, and his brethren, 220. The sons of Gershom, the third. Joel, the chief, and his brethren, 130. The sons of Elsiphan, Shimei, the chief, and his brethren, 200. The sons of Hebron, Eliel, the chief, and his brethren, fourscore. Of the sons of Uziel, Amadab, the chief, and his brethren, 112. So David's getting just a gathering together, the priests and Levites. A mass of people for the Lord. In verse 11, David called Zadok and Abiathar the priest. Abiathar is the high priest. Zadok is the second priest. Now that's kind of interesting. The Bible prescribed that there was one high priest. The first one was Aaron. And then when Aaron was to die, it would be his son. I think it was Eliezer. Eliezer of Phinehas. I forget which one. But the high priest. But Aaron had other sons. Two of them, Nadab and Abihu, died with a strange fire. But he had two sons that would minister in the office, but one could be the high priest. And this is not something odd, because when you come to Luke chapter 3, verse 2, and I've heard people make a remark, well, when we get to Luke chapter 3, verse 2, there's two priests. That ought not to have been so. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 3, verse 2, we're given the, the rulership of the time. And it says, verse 2, Ananias and Cyprus, see Cleopas, Cyprus or Cleopas, being the high priest. And I've been taught before, oh, you know, you got to be careful. There's, well, once the high priest, one's the second priest, and you find that over here with David. Biathar is the high priest, and Zadok is under him. And for the Levites, so they're not priests. Levites are not priests, but the priests had to be Levites. Uriel, Asahah, and Joel, Shemaniah, Elo, and Imadab. Im, Im, and said unto them, this is what David said to the priest. Ye are the chief of your fathers of the Levite. You're the ones in charge. Responsibility is on you. Sanctify, set yourselves apart. Be holy unto God. Sanctify yourself, both ye and your brethren. And we just got the numbers, verses 4 through 10. Where the numbers 4, four through 10, David is speaking to the men in charge of these men. Both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto his, unto the place that I have prepared for it. So the ark of the Lord is not going where Moses built. The ark of the Lord is not going where the children of Israel under Moses built. David has built his own holy and most holy and tabernacle area. And in that area is where the ark is going to go. The ark has been gone. It's been sitting uh, we looked at the other night in, in, in Abinadab's house. After the, the new cart of the Philistines, which came into Israel, they grabbed the ark, they put it in Abinadab's house, and it just stayed there throughout the reign of Saul. No one ever saw it and never had a place. I don't know where the rest of the stuff went. For because ye did it not 
at the first, chapter 13, verse 9, chapter 13, verse 7, uh, and the new car, um, and, and they carried the ark of God in the new car. For because he did it not at the first, ye, it was your orders, David. Why would David charge the Levites or the priests saying, ye, the one, when it says David, David went up in all Israel and they carried the ark? Because the so, priest should have known. Like the priest came up to, like the, the prophet came up to David, thou art the man. Somebody in chapter 13, verses 1 to 7, or before 7, should tap David on the shoulder and say, Sir, I know you love the Lord. I know you want to do right. That cart over there, that's not correct. Sir, this is, now look, David in chapter 15 knows. He knows it's to be the sons of Kohath. He knows it's to be the sons of Aaron. He knows the difference between the sons of Aaron and the priest. And he knows the difference between the Levi. Somebody should went up to David and say, Sir, respectfully, you're the king, but we're the ambassadors of God. This is not correct. Mm -hmm. There are many people today in any kind of ministry that when they are told something by the Bible, and it's their responsibility to tell others, and they don't, they will be held responsible. God told Ezekiel, if you do not go out and tell them my words, the blood of their finger, the blood of their lives will be on your fingers. People who know how to be saved and don't go in the world and preach the gospel and do whatever they want to do outside that, they are going to be responsible for those people who they could have told about Jesus and how to be saved and didn't. When a man gets up before a church and he preaches anything but how to be grown in the Lord, how to grow from, from spiritual infant, the new birth, into an old man, if that man of that church does not tell them how to grow in the Lord, he'll be charged at fault. These Levites are charged with fault because they didn't stop David and say, this is what to do. That's how, they're, that's how they're guilty. But David himself, did not the law prescribe to him in the law when it came to a king? He was to write down his own law. I guess he didn't do that. Never in, the, in any of the kings is it recorded that any of the kings, now they may have, I don't know, but it's not ever recorded that they copied that law themselves. And there is a law that says, listen, just because you didn't know doesn't make you innocent. And there's a, there's a thing in law today, you know, ignorance of the law doesn't set you free. Everyone's at blame here when it comes to that ark doing wrong. It looked good with the Philistines, but it's incorrect. And so when somebody brings something into their church that is not correct and it is wrong, and we talked about this the other night, if somebody in that church knows it's wrong and won't speak up about it, then they'll be held guilty. Problem is people don't want to listen. Now, I've done that many times. I've gone to the people and tell them it's wrong. And most of the people will not listen. But you've done your job. And David called Zadok and Abiathar the priests and for the Levites, Uro, Asahiah, and Joel, Shemaiah, and Eli, and Aminadab. And said to him, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourself, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel into a place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us. Well, look how David's changed. Let's go back over here, verse 11 of chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse 11, David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. God, you killed Uzzah. Chapter 14, chapter 15, it's upon us. You know what David said? 
I'm guilty just as much as you guys are. David takes the blame himself, too. As Daniel prays for the children of Israel, he puts himself in that prayer, in the repentance of iniquity and sin. For that we sought him not after the due order, that means the proper way. We did it the Philistine way, we did not do it God's way. And we see that same principle today when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me, John chapter 14, verse 6. So when they come in with the Philistine way, we'll come on with a guy who's got the fish head. Nope. Nope. We'll come through golden plates with big sunglasses. Nope. We'll come in through magazines. Nope. We'll twist our legs and go with our... Nope. It didn't work for David. It's not going to work for us. And if God were allow someone into the kingdom of heaven, into New Jerusalem, by Mary or by any form of religion, he would have to apologize to David. Because David did it the wrong way. The children of Israel did it the wrong way. The priests did it the wrong way. The Levites did it the wrong way. He would have to apologize to these group of people for doing it the wrong way and not allowing them to do it the wrong way. And God's not going to do that. So David in chapter 15 of 1 Chronicles shows us Jesus Christ. He is the right way. He has shown us religion, chapter 13, and said that's not it. That causes death. In chapter 13, Dagon's way, the Philistine way, is death. Look, die. In chapter 15, where is the death? There is no death. And if you die in the Lord, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And as Christians, we all are guilty. We are all sinners. The breach is upon us all. But we're saved by the one. The way, the truth, and the life. So the priests and the Levites, see the difference? The priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders. There it is. With the staves thereof. That's why the staves were there. When they put that ark on that cart, those staves should have said something. They're not there for decoration. They're not there for ornamental, you know, ooh, look. They were there for the shoulders. They're on as Moses commanded, according to the word of the Lord. That's what Moses said. That's the law. Moses is the lawgiver. And if you don't do what Moses tells you to do in the time of period that we are called the Old Testament, that's it. You're done. There's no Calvary. And David spank to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers and instruments of music. That's just the old way of spelling it. Psalteries and harps and cymbals. Sounding. That's the first time that word shows up. Sounding. By lifting up the voice with joy. So there it is. David has a musical band, it have you, musical people, and it was to be praising God. I read today in, in a book I'm reading about throughout the Bible, and that it says in that book that there would have been no women, there would have been all men. Interesting. There would be no music of sensation instruments that would make you think of being in another mood. If the musical instrument that would be played were, were to be sounding worldly or fleshy, it would not be allowed in the temple music that David prescribed. It would be maybe there for the feast, maybe the feast of the tabernacles, the feast of trumpets, but David would have all these instruments that no fleshly, worldly, lusty desire of these instruments. They were just to the praise of God. The saxophone would not have ever been be played for David before the Lord. There's no drums mentioned to be played for the Lord. And they even said certain flutes would not be played because the flutes gave you a little made your mind wander, they said. I thought that was quite interesting. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to stop there. We're either going to do this in two more or at least one more. We're going to stop with David. He's preparing the right way. He's getting it right. Someone has spoken to him. He's got the priest. He, he, he's got them in order. He's talking to the lead. This is, what, this is the plans of David. The plan is we're going to do it the right way this time. Glory to God. 